Good evening. I'm Chris Matthews in Washington. Let me start tonight with the news that President Obama believed captured American serviceman Bo Bergdahl risked death if the U.S. didn't accept the deal for his release. The fear, based upon his hard appearance in a December video, that he would soon die of malnutrition or be killed, drove Obama to cut the best deal we could get. In any case, the president said today that we had a chance to free someone wearing the American uniform from enemy hands and has no apologies for his decision. Meanwhile, a new poll shows the American people opposed to the deal, especially to the release of dangerous prisoners to win the Americans' release. Senator Angus King's an independent from Maine who caucuses with the Democrats. He was president last night's closed Senate briefing about Sergeant Bo Bergdahl's release, which took place in a secure basement room in the Capitol's Visitor Center last night, an unusual setting. What was it like in that room? Did you get a sense, uh, Senator King, that you had learned something new last night about the circumstances of the president's decision? Yeah, Chris, I've been to a lot of these briefings. Last night was actually one of the most informative. I went in with a lot of questions, and many of them were answered. I think probably the most dramatic moment in the briefing was when they played the 30-second uh, video of Bo Bergdahl last uh, winter uh, in captivity. It was, uh, he looked awful, sounded awful. It was, it was pretty dramatic. And when that video went off, there was a, uh, a, a sort of a stunned silence in the room. I think they ought to uh, declassify that video. I think it would be very informative to people to see it. Now, I can't, nobody's going to be able to diagnose whether he was sick or malnourished or, or what it was, but I'll tell you, he, he wasn't in very good shape. Uh, uh, and, and I think that was an important part. The other question was, why now? Why this deal? There were, it was an hour and a half, two hour uh, briefing, uh, and we had a lot of those questions. But the fundamental principle is we bring our soldiers home, period. Uh, and were that goes back to George Washington. Got, were they going to kill him? Not just the malnutrition, but I'm getting reports that people coming to that briefing said they were told last night that he risked being killed if, we, if the word got out, even about the deal itself. That was what we, what we were told. I can't uh, reveal the sources, Chris. That's classified. But I specifically asked after this statement was made, can we make this public? And the answer was yes. He was at risk of being killed if the, uh, if the negotiations uh, had leaked out. That, I don't think there was any certainty to it, but it was credible intelligence that, that uh, this was a possibility. You know, the polling, we'll be talking to Howard Feynman in a moment, but the polling is showing that people do have a different attitude about this deal based upon what they think of the service record and the status of Bergdahl when he left, uh, when he left his post there. My question, most politicians, however, office holders say, no, that's not the issue. And I think you just made that point. The issue is, do we bring back all our guys, Whether, what, whatever kind of service record they have? Is that your position? We bring the guy home, period. Hey, Chris, one of the things we fight for around the world is the rule of law and due process. This guy's entitled to due process. He hasn't okay, had fine. any hearing yet, and that's, that's what's important. Get him back here, get him well, and then we'll deal with what he did or didn't well, do, and he'll be uh, dealt about? with accordingly. What, if, what's left, if he was really in danger of dying through malnutrition or in danger of being killed because the word leaked out, where's the argument anymore? I mean, I'm not thrilled with this deal, as everybody knows, but if it comes down to it, you sort of have to suck it up and take it, and you make the best deal you can, like all grown-ups do in life. Well, What's I, more uh, to be talked about here? Well, What's the dallying you know, about here? Listen, I'm in an institution here, Chris, that's a lot better second guessing than it is actually doing things. And, well you know, said. there's a lot of second guessing to be done around here. But, uh, you know, I, 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 think you, I think you have it right. There are questions. Was it a good deal? Uh, but, you know, we don't know all the circumstances the president was facing, what the options were, what the yeah. counter offer and offers were. Uh, this is something, you know, this is oh, a tough God. decision that the president had to make. And I'm, he brought I'm a guy home. I agree with that. Look, I, I respect you as a, as, a, as a smart, in fact, fair guy, which is a hell of a statement for a politician. Why is, this such a, why is this such a pissy partisan thing? Why do we have people all going to the ballot? To me, it's been a difficult issue. I don't find any partisanship in my heart of this. I'm trying to figure the darn thing out. I'm not used to making prisoner swaps. It's not what I do every day. I show, why right. is all the Democrats sort of going along with it quietly, all the Republicans sort of generally going against it? Why is this a partisan issue? I don't know. I'm I'm so tired of it, Chris. Everything is a partisan issue. I, I've gotten to the point where if, uh, if uh, President Obama got up tomorrow morning and walked across the Potomac River, uh, there are people around here who'd say, look, he can't swim. 
You know, yeah. I mean, it, it just, it's a reflex and it's, and it's, I think it's wearing people out and it doesn't contribute. My view is let's get the facts, let's take a deep breath, let's try to uh, find out exactly what happened and then, and then move from there. There are reasons that we can have differences, but, you know, don't, let's not uh, be jumping all over these things and turning every, everything now, Chris, has turned into a partisan issue. And I think it's a real shame because it, it cheapens the discourse. You know, I think if Lindsey Graham saw him walking across the Potomac River, he'd want to bring in an exorcist. He'd say he was possessed by the devil. I mean, I agree with you. It's crazy. Anyway, at a press conference today in real world over in Belgium, in Brussels, President Obama was emphatic that he did the right thing by his lights in securing Sergeant Bergdahl's release. Here's well, the Chris, president doubling down. Let's watch him for a second, please. Yeah. We do not leave anybody wearing the American uniform behind. We had a prisoner of war uh, whose health had deteriorated and we were deeply concerned about it, and we saw an opportunity and we seized it and I make no apologies for that. I make no apologies. Where are you on that final line there? Is this a command decision that only one person can make when it really comes down to it? You can have Tom Donlan and Susan Rice and everybody floating around and all kinds of politicians with attitude. But in the end, doesn't the president have to make the call? And he made it. He does have to make the call. He made it. We can talk about whether it was a good call or a bad call, but he had to make it. And Chris, I think a way to think about this is what if it were reversed and Bo Bergdahl was found beheaded on the streets of Kabul? The people, uh, you know, a lot of the same people that are complaining now would be saying, why didn't he do more to get this guy back? I mean, you know, th this, is a, this is a very tough decision. And, uh, you know, we can talk about it, but uh, the, the bottom line is uh, you bring our people back, then you deal with the due process issues, okay. whether or not he was a good soldier. Uh, and was it a good deal? Do you have to release those five guys? We don't know what other terms he was offered. Okay, thank you so much, Senator Angus King, independent, who caucuses with Democrats up in Maine. We have some early polling, by the way, on the Bergdahl prisoner swap from the Huffington Post.